Hello everybody and welcome to another K-Tapes. Today uh, we're gonna take a look at some pretty cool tapes that I was able to buy uh, in the past, let's say, more or less month, because uh, it's been a bit of a, like a while. Uh, nothing too great, to be honest, although there's, uh, I would say maybe three tapes that I will show you today uh, are actually pretty interesting because they you don't see them very often so uh, let's start the first one i have today is called fire power uh, i believe the real title is speed trap i think it's written right here uh it's a cool uh, it's a cool release as you can notice i mean i don't know if you can notice it or not but this is a small box so these tapes have a higher price tag to them so this is uh, also quite, I would say, well, yeah, it's quite rare. I mean, because usually I don't really look for that stuff because this was actually part of a bundle I purchased and it came in a bigger box and I did find a smaller clamshell to put it into. I mean, looks much nicer this way. Of course, tape is pretty clean. So that's always a huge plus. Looking for the release date uh, right here, which is 1985. Uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty pretty old for uh, Korean tape. Thinking they started about 1982, um, so that would make it a um, quite old release for Korean tape. I have right here Holocaust 4, and if you're wondering what is Holocaust 4, because we all know Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, then what happened to part two, three, and, and now four. Uh, it's just that what they did is they retitled Holocaust, just Cannibal Holocaust, and then they went from uh, two to four. For all the other cannibal-related films, uh, and by that I mean uh, Ferox was part three. Part two, uh, I think it was Eaten Alive. And uh, part four is Massacre in Dinosaur Valley. Yeah, that's number four. It's a pretty cool cover. They kept the, uh, the gore and the stuff intact and a bit of like top nudity right here, uh, which I shouldn't make a zoom in on this. So anyway, pretty cool. Uh, good looking copy as well. Next, uh, this one is Shocking Africa. So that's a obviously a shockumentary. They put like the big like, uh, warning or like uh, uncensored but uh, it is uncensored just the censored by doing that they censored the cover which is a bit ironic so shocking Africa I thought I had one left in stock but I didn't so uh, pretty cool to just grab another one so label for this is Deu. so I guess they were big into the that genre at the time I did also pick up, I mean, uh, it's on my shelf, uh, although I, I showed it to you before, so I don't feel the need to go fetch it and show it to you again. But I also bought, I mean, the purpose of that bundle where I got those two tapes uh, because it had a Cannibal Holocaust, so the original Cannibal Holocaust, not a part three, four, five or whatnot, but the original Cannibal Holocaust. So I did uh, pick that up and it was uh, part of the new stuff I have. Okay, next I have Les Orgies de Caligula, so that is the title in French, so the, the Orgies of Caligula. Um, I can't recall which one this is, but I think it's a, um, perhaps a Joe D'Amato film. Anyway, I will put the information right there so you can see what's the real title of this one. Uh, once again, I had this one in stock. It's just, it was part of a bundle, so I just, I mean, I kept it. It's not in super top shape, as you can see this the spine is, uh, you know, it has this sticker and the sticker is not on the plastic. It's actually on the sleeve itself. And since the bottom is already damaged here, if I try to remove this, it, it might damage further down. Usually I do remove that. At least I put some water like gently and rub it gently and you can kind of not peel it off because it will peel the actual um, cover. It will damage the actual cover. But if you put a bit of... Uh, you rub it with with a cloth that is that has water on it 
you can kind of remove it, uh, but at least you don't have a sticker. And it does like at first glance, it looks much better than having a sticker. But some people don't mind having a sticker, especially those old school rental stickers, because it adds to the charm or I don't know. I, I personally, I don't like them, but uh, yeah, if anyone wants this tape, doesn't mind the sticker, hey, I, I'm, I would be more than glad to uh, sell this tape. So there you go, Les Orgies de Caligula. So next one, I have Wild Beasts. Uh, this was like early 1980s, I think it was 1983, could be wrong. Uh, so yeah, like animal, you know, gone wrong, something, experiments, or I don't know, uh, hunting animals, you know, like they were, they were big on like, in, back in the early 80s, like, you know, grizzly and stuff like that, like, uh, killer animals anyway so wild beast i think is one of those uh not the most like outstanding cover although I, I kind of like that tiger jumping probably has nothing to do with the film i've never seen this film to be honest but uh but anyway by the way the cover is pretty pretty neat as you can see there's no sun fade or anything uh yeah like of course the cosmetic of the uh the cover is not like brand new but the sleeve itself is in pretty good shape. Next, uh, this, I was so happy to get this, by the way. Um, it was part of a bundle, and once again in that bundle, there was kind of nothing else good. I, I think there were like five tapes or six tapes, and that was the only one I wanted in that bundle. The rest just went to, to, to garbage, <laughs> pretty much, because uh, they were all like comedies and dramas and stuff no one wants. Uh, so yeah, this is Blood Track, or I think it's Blood Tracks, just they misspelled it, and that's a uh, mid-1980s, I think it's 1985, a kind of like mountain slasher type of film, uh, maybe it has to do with some cannibals as well. Um, so there you go, with some pretty gruesome images on the back, that's, that's cool. Well, not that gruesome, but hey. Um, spine is not in top shape, to be honest. There's some obvious sun fade, uh, but this is quite rare. This is the first time I actually find a copy of this. I've never seen this before. It's the very first time uh, I see it, and maybe the first time you see it. So, hey, enjoy it while it's there. Next one I have is, um, it's kind of a blind buy. Uh, I found this, it wasn't too pricey. And uh, I kind of like those horizontal covers uh, like this. So this is a, um, it's kind of a straight to video, uh, late 90s uh, Kung Fu slash Mafia uh, Korean film. And uh, one thing that they were, that was extremely popular in Korea, like back in the day, uh, was like the guys with the trench coat, pretty much, I guess, probably, most likely, copied from like, you know, the John Woo films of the 90s and all those like, Cool Hong Kong action films although the Korean films they had like the fedora like pretty much like the 1950s or 60s gangster film so it mixes like genres somehow or just it was the fashion back then uh, so any gangster film you find in Korea from the early 90s up to maybe mid this is a bit late for that fashion to be honest but hey uh, so like let's say late 80s to mid 90s uh, gangster films, all the guys have those fedoras and of course the trench coats and stuff. Um, so I don't know anything about this film to be honest. I think it's a straight to video. I mean just by the quality of the screenshots, I mean you can tell it's been shot on video right there. Also uh, this unknown label, I don't know what that is, I can't even read it, it's too small. Um, yeah, it's just like your typical gangster film, you know. Kind of scenes like that with the big boss everyone's bowing just like you know the japanese gangster films it's uh 1999 wow 1999 i thought it was a bit earlier than that but yeah it's 1999 and um i think this never came out on dvd i've never seen a dvd of this so uh, yeah this one is uh <laughs> it's a terminator it's a korean terminator it's not called Korean Terminator, but it's a Korean uh, Terminator versus, uh, with, um, I forgot the name of this guy, but he was a comedian back then and he made like a couple of kids films, like just a 
comedy dude and um, of course this film is a comedy uh, of course it has action as well and it features the Terminator I mean you're a kid in Korea what's more cool than the Terminator back in the 90s probably not many things uh, but yeah of course Terminator is more geared towards like <laughs> a mature audience but in Korea that was for kids uh, so they included that um, in this film. So really fun. Uh, again, well, of course, there's some s s uh, fade on the spine, but that doesn't really matter because this is really rare now. Used to be a bit more common, but now uh, this is just uh, extremely hard to get. And you can tell the Terminator in Korea just is riding this armored bike. Uh, I mean, you have to see it to believe it. I mean, you see it now, but if you see it in action, it's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I have nothing else to say, really. It's just the kind of thing you have to see it. So, Korean Terminator. And uh, by the way, there were like two Korean Terminators. Actually. There were two Terminator films made in Korea. There's this one, and the other one is, again, Terminator versus or with Hong Gildong. Hong Gildong, which is pretty much like the equivalent of uh, Robin Hood uh, for like a Western audience. And now we're down to the last film today. And this is also a quite rare tape. It's Midnight from director John Russo. Uh, I changed the sleeve because uh, the, uh, the sleeve, I changed the box because it was a bit beat up. Uh, this one is a pretty clean box, although it has a rip here. So I tried to put it back as nicely as possible and uh, right here also it's not too good uh, but thankfully it's only on the on the fold so visually if you display this tape on a shelf it, it is not really it, it won't catch your attention too much and the front is absolutely beautiful uh, really well cut and uh, the same goes for the back although a little bit a bit of a fold here but the rest of the back is really clean and uh, there's not much sun fade. Well, no, there is sun fade. You can see the yellow on the front is not really apparent on the back, uh, on the spine, because yellow is usually a color that will fade very quickly. So one of the first colors to fade out. After that is pink and red, but your pink and your red are pretty even right here. So anyway, it's a good looking copy although it is a bit damaged, sadly. And uh, by the way, the tape inside is in top shape. Uh, so anyway, it's still quite collectible because again, this is not a very young tape. This tape is from, um, let me check. This tape is from 1987. So anything that is prior to the Korean Olympics is quite hard to get in Korea because when the Olympics happened in Korea, it was huge. It opened up the country for investments and everything. And there was like an economic boom. But everything before the Olympics, uh, it's, uh, it's very hard to get. Uh, so yeah, if things like that, if you get your hands on them, uh, keep them. Or uh, don't be shy to ask uh, a good price for, for these uh, tapes because uh, you won't see them very often. I found those two tapes, okay, <laughs> sadly The Thing and uh, Evil Dead, uh, but the tapes were, were moldy beyond repair. I mean, like throughout the film, it was moldy uh, on the reading surface of the tape. So I just threw them away. Actually, someone wanted them, so I had to dig back in my trash <laughs> to pick up the tapes. I, I mean, usually I trash the tapes, but I do keep the sleeves in case I find another copy and my sleeve is in better shape. And uh, well, for this one, I don't have any other sleeve. So that's the sleeve that came with the tape. But for this one, for the thing, this is the actual tape I found. At first glance, you may think, oh, it, it looks, looks okay. Uh, but no, it doesn't. It was taped. Like there was no plastic um, binding this, this cover. Like the plastic has been ripped and they just put, just put some tape. Uh, so it's kind of like this cover is laminated basically uh, Yeah, it's kind of like just laminated So this is uh, this is just trash. I Mean if you guys have to deal with some 
gently molded tapes. If you guys have to deal with some like slightly moldy tapes and you see what I have to deal with, uh, I mean, you're lucky because uh, this, uh, <laughs> this is heavy duty. Uh, at least I will put it in a collectible, well, so to speak, state so that it can be at least displayed and the mold that is inside won't spread, it will be all removed. Although not on the reading surface and that's the, usually a very big deal. Uh, and he will have a new case and uh, this sleeve instead which is much nicer. Alright guys, so that's all I have for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, so you were able to see a, a couple of cool tapes that I've actually never been able to find before such as uh, you know the blood tracks, the midnight, even the Korean gangster film that's pretty cool and uh, Terminator of course. Those I think I got them before but hey if it's your first time around I hope you enjoyed the video and soon I will make another video on some games I was able to get. So if games is not your thing forget about it if it is uh, just check back in a couple days I will put up that video on some Korean games Korean Xbox games because I do collect the Xbox because I do have an Xbox so I will post that very soon so that said everyone have a great week great weekend and see you again on K-Tapes <laughs> <laughs>